fucking nice. Uh, this may be, I'm, I don't even know, I'm actually like talking about drugs. I'm not going to make with drugs, I'm sorry. But it is drugism, number three, my drug habit. It's going to be the last one I'm going to make for now, probably. I'm going to talk about enlightenment and pickup and fun shit. Here we go. So, you know, we talked about my weed habit. I started smoking weed at 15, but I really got weed high on weed at 16. And then from there, me and Tico started hanging, hanging out every weekend, smoking weed on Saturday and Sundays, and it's fire, and it's um, not roof. I know, it's fire, yeah, it's fire escape. It's fucking crazy, yo. It was just like broke shit and thing, and he got into a friend and shit. I am. Yeah, those were good times. Those were, those were my formative years. So it was his time raising me, actually making me into a decent person. Because my family showed the shot me to the point where it was like, I wouldn't even be who I am today if I would never met Tico. Like, Tico changed my life completely. I don't remember love for Tico. I think Tico hates right now. Because I fucked over our, our, our brother. Because me, Tico, and this song, B. Me, Tico, and B are brothers for another month. Like, our bond are, are, is fucking crazy high. Like, we always hung out with each other, took care of each other, like, looked out for each other, we loved each other. Like, that's the thing, it's like, I feel like I'm dying with love, but I feel like I know deep down B does love me. All I gotta do is find him, that's, only, that's why I need this business to work out. So I can come back at the B and help him out and provide for him, take care of him like I was before. But he gets sick, you know? And it's fucked up. I have no idea how fucked up as he feels. But that's the thing, I have no clue, but it's like, yeah. So yeah, anyway, back to the point. I love my best friend, my brother. Even if y'all hate me, guys, I love y'all forever, guys. I don't care if y'all hate me or not. I don't give a fuck. I love y'all forever. I don't even care if y'all want to. If you don't a millionaire, I know you just give y'all the mountains. Even if you don't chill like four times a year. Just because I love y'all so much. Even y'all, I don't give a fuck. I feel like I still love, I still love, I still love, especially for the people in my life. And especially for my master, the God Tiger, Tico, and me and Tico's brother, B. But that's not a thing at all. But yeah, for those three people specifically, I can put up this for love too, and I don't give a fuck if they're just using it. I'll let them use it. I'll let, I'll let them use it for money or whatever they want. I don't care. There's so many drugs, so I don't care. I love them so much. I love being with them, expressing myself to them and everything, you know. I want to get all of us together again. That's my goal for everything, to get all of us together again. It's going to be hard, but I know I can do it. But for now, I got to focus on my finances. Anyways, yeah, that's nothing now. Maybe they're watching it. Maybe they're secret watching it. I mean, I'm probably sure they'll be able to tell you what's Yeah, anyways, yeah. So I weed from 16. At first, I was, I was sitting on smoking it once, one, two, two times a week. Every week, Tico was crib and shit, or stick or whatever. And then at 17, I was a senior in high school now. And I still remember the day, this is the first time I smoked weed with myself. I forgot how I got the money to buy the pipe. I don't know, I don't know. I forgot the money. I, I mean, I, it is wrong. I'm pretty sure I drink people, I don't know. I forgot what to smoke. I think it's the smoke. This is what I was for. Anyway, I still remember the day, it was senior year. And you know, I, you have to go second period of your schedule. I went to second period, and I was just, I was still like a inside size um, loser at that time. Cause this is the whole thing I feel about it. I feel like if you just look at yourself as a loser, then you are a loser. But you're the only person in the world that can decide you're a loser. Nobody in the world can ever decide you're a loser. So if anybody else tells you you're a loser, then fuck off. I'm the winner. I'm the one. You are me, and I am you. So everything you've done, I've done. I have more. You said something like that. That's a way. Something on the door, guys. I'm sorry, that. And you guys ever talk to loser? I'm your parents, your siblings, your uncles, aunts, even your children, whatever. Don't let nobody call you a loser. Only you can call yourself a loser. And if you are a loser, then this channel's for you. Because I was a loser for most of my life, but I've been showing and teaching exactly how I went from a loser to the number one top level, number one top percent, one percent, top one percent human being in the world. And I'm better than everybody. I'm more valuable than everybody that's alive right now. Nobody has as valuable as I do. Nobody. Nobody does. Not even close. I mean, those people are close. Like my Facebook crush, and Tiger, and Tico, and B, and my sister. My brother's kind of like a hopeless right now. Um, my favorite cousin, Alfredo, he's a veteran straight. He has some level of wisdom on it, but he's just a devout Christian, so it's like, you know, he's kind of stuck on that. He has those rules that to live by everything, yeah. That's just how he is. I ask them what they want to go out and pick up, pick up on girls, be like, nah, man. That's all I want to do, bro. I'm taking my fucking brothers married, bro. What you gonna sing? We gonna sing like, yeah, I know we're gonna be in bitches all the fucking time. I was, I was, why he was living here and shit? Why he was so shy and weak and out of beta or whatever? So I can never go out with these girls. There was one day, fuck it, I don't care. I just trust myself. There was one day he took me. There was one day I think, I, I feel like his wife made him do it. I, I, they didn't have a kid there now, time. they were already living together already in their apartment. I don't know if she went to it. Or she bought whatever. My brother took me out downtown. We need to go to a Halloween club or something, right? So we're chilling and shit. I'm just having a great time with my brother, yo. Like, I really love my brother like crazy, bro. He's having, like, he's pretty much my best friend. Even though we have, I really feel like we're not as close as we should be. But he's overall, he's still my best friend. Like, he's that's still my best friend for real. I love him. I mean, as much as I love Tico and B, I love my brother. I love more. I love his family. 
I mean, I've realized that this whole year, my addiction, my crowd, this shit, is that family comes first. These people out here are calling just your friends or whatever, they're not really your friends. Most of them aren't really your fucking friends. They're only trying to use you and get something from you. If you guys have to offer them, make sure to offer them anything, they're not your friend more, no more. They'll flip on you, you're becoming an enemy. That's one thing I really, really fucking know about this year, though. Who your real friends are, what a real friend is. Like, if she and all of my real true best friends are, are my, 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 my number one crackhead friend, shout out to boy, shout out to partner, she doesn't agree, chemo. Like, he's the only one I was that. Real quick, real quick, real quick story. I actually made a crackhead gang while I was fucking crackhead the last year. It was called New Age Mafia. That's the reason, New Age Mafia was really a movement for peace and spread God consciousness and also a street gang. Right, but we 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 don't do anything. Yeah, in the moment, all we've really done is just smoke each other. Like basically, what I did was I made them say the first commandment of my religion, and now right there, once they spoke that, then they joined the member, and I promised that every Friday or whatever I'll smoke crack with them. Right, but honestly, I only done it. With, I'll probably only done each of them like one time. And only the high ranking members. Like the low ranking members never even lit, smoked or anything. Let me see who the members were. There was High God, me, High God Angel, my fake girlfriend, one of my fake girls. I have two fake girlfriends. But Angel's one I like more because I actually asked Angel to be my girlfriend. She said, like, Yeah, but I just saw my boy Moose fucker really giving him money. You know, I understand in the crack world, people just go crack your money to fuck with me, general. But Angel was about fucking for free twice, though. But, you know, at the end of the day, I have no problem paying Angel 20 dollars to give me hell or whatever. You know, I don't care. Like, I have no problem paying for sex with Angel. There's nothing wrong with paying for sex, guys. Like, you're paying more money to get these on like five, ten days. We're taking 100, 300, 500 dollars each day. That's 500. That's like three days, that's 1500. That's five days, that's 2500. That's ten days, that's five grand on this bitch. And maybe I only made out once or twice. And you haven't fucked yet. That's the whole thing, guys. If you just burn all just find out cheap. Alright, so I'm gonna turn to a dark river. What the fuck? Damn, my joker. So, yeah. So, I smoked so I was 17 years old. I went to my first day, second period, my schedule. And I was just looking super angry and shit. So, I don't know. I remember staring at one of my acquaintances. I'm not gonna say name, call him us. In a, in a weird, angry way, he was looking at me in a weird, he was looking at me in a strange way. That's the only thing I remember. Then from there, I think I, just, I think I just left early. I think I didn't even go fuck. I literally just walked out, went home, and I don't forget, I don't remember how I got the weed. I think I had the weed already, I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure I had some money, probably saved up money. Cause my mom would only have me like a one to two hour allowance a day while I was in high school. A one to two dollar allowance a day, only for five dollars a week. So, so it was like annoying. It was like I, only, I would only get five or ten dollars a month if I was lucky a week during that time. And I was fucking nothing, man. I was a teenager, you know? But it's that, I don't know. And that day, me and my mom was struggling that time. I don't know. So I don't mind. Anyways, yeah. So 17, pretty much starting, so sophomore year, I started sleeping in school, not going to school last month, and just going home. Because you know, it was fear. It was like I had a massive social anxiety and anxiety and depression and everything in general. That I just didn't want to see my acquaintances at high school who were so happy, so nice and cool and everything. Just, you know, like, I liked them. They were, I actually wanted to be really cool with them, but I was just so shy and scared that I never got to be really that cool with them. Like, it was like a whole group, you know? Like, I actually had my own little group, my own Oscar group, but I actually do have my whole, close high school friends, but I still talk to this day, but it's like, I really like to be friends with more of the acquaintances. You know, the acquaintances they are just really cool, and the girls are really cute. And they actually tried to talk to me a couple of times, you know, because I was so shy and awkward and insult and dweeb and nerd, whatever that. I literally shake when they, started, when they even approached me and talked to me, you know? Like, that's how I was. That's what I'm talking about with the drug addiction. The drug addiction is going to tell you how they get rid of all that. So yeah, so the same thing I start smoking weed, I like, think every day or every week in my room or my crack, or my weed pipe or with rope, or with joint paper. I remember that I trying to smoke with printing paper and that shit was so horrible. But hey, that's what I did at first. So yeah, that was weed. So it was 17. But when I was 17 though, actually once I was 17, I discovered a new drug. But there was one day where I didn't have weed and if I was gonna hit real quick, guys, hold on, wait. This is a real nice block, yeah, we don't like boss. Ah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry, I don't cracked up, guys. I was just talking about, talking about weed. Like, weed's really great. So, yeah, I recommend everyone alive that never smoked weed take 10 puffs of weed, and then you, after that, if it's too much, you don't do it ever again. But I recommend every person watching this video, everyone to tell you, tell everyone they know, anybody from the age of like, 16 or fuck it, 16 or 18 and up, let's start, this is like 18, 18 and up. They just take 10, like, decent puffs, like, maybe three to five second puffs of weed. Like, like eight, five second puffs, and then two, 10 second puffs. And then just see how they feel. And then understand, and see how they feel from there. Even if you're on medication, then you're on, see how you feel. If you feel like you feel good, then this is what you do. Next day you say you're on medication, you throw your medication out and you smoke more weed. And you do it again, this time you take 15 puffs. 
Like, let's say you take 10, three, three second puffs, or three five second puffs, or then five ten second puffs, and you put the weed down. I see how you feel. If you feel good, then an hour or so, do, maybe do 15 again, and do the same thing there again, like that. That's how you smoke weed and be good. Look at what I'm saying? I could crack easy anytime I want, but it's like, crackers are a tool for me. Like, I realized, like, every time I make one of these videos, I think I have crack before I make these videos. I feel like I talk fast, but I feel like if you can watch them multiple times, that's why I feel like I do it on purpose well, so you can, so you can watch them multiple times, so I get more views. If you watch the video three times, you're gonna get everything you know from the video. And I understand my joke, that shit. Alright, so at 17, I was wondering I didn't have any weed. I really didn't get high badly. So I looked up online how to get high from home. And I found two things Nugman and DX10, aka Robo Session. I did Nutmeg first, and that shit was so fucking horrible, yo. I felt like the whole wash was closed again. Like a fucking CIA or shadow government, another person, was about to bring it to my home and kill my whole family and kill me. And like they already knew where I was at. And like they felt that they listened to all my phone calls. They didn't leave over done. And they were gonna come up to my fucking crib and arrest me and kill me or some shit. That's what I was thinking on Nutmeg. Do not do Nutmeg. I'm gonna try. But robot tussing, it took a robot tussing. Right, I'm gonna make this quick. I think after 14 minutes, I'm gonna upload these videos and I have a number. And I don't have a phone number. And my mom don't use her number. And I don't wanna go to all the work of asking a friend to use their number. So that's why I rock you real sharp. So pretty much, I started doing DXM from a 17. For me, a whole year 17. Um, after I graduated high school, I think July, I think it was a while ago, I got diplomas. I, July, I think we got diplomas. I think after I got my diploma from high school, July, was it? I can't remember after I graduated right away or after I got my diploma. I know I graduated out soon, but I got my diploma around July, I think 11th or some shit, I don't remember. My new period video was not Anyways, yeah. I, either after I graduated out of June or after I graduated about July, I decided to go real hard on DXM. Cause real quick on DXM, DXM has four different levels. There's the first plateau was basically feels like accuracy or like shit like that, accuracy or out of whatever. You just feel real nice, a nice body, you feel real light while you walk. And you have a right, and you have a nice, decent, and real nice feeling. But then there's the second special where it's like the strongest drug ever by far. Like even selling an LSD already by the second show and it makes you real, real fucked up like crazy. But you can't feel your brain curve frying and fucking you've been fucking up with your brain. But you feel so fucking high and crazy and fucking good at the same time. I said it didn't feel good. But it only felt good for me because I would be depressed and hate myself and anxious and everything. So it is associative. So basically it lets you escape. You escape from reality doing dissociatives. Drugs like Angel Dust, PCP, water. DXM, Robotussin, or Tussin, or Dexamethorphan, the whole name, and ketamine, those drugs, the socialists, for real depressed, um, and anxious, and people who hate them, so they're so sorry, whatever, that drug gets them, they're that, those drugs are their favorite type of drug, and they're addicted to them like crazy. Because it makes them escape, and they don't have to be themselves, they can just be uh, observers of nothing. But actually, you becoming God, the, the, woman, the mother God, the viewer, who says or speaks nothing, but simply sees everything. They're actually achieving a high level of enlightenment when we do those drugs, actually. So that's what I'm trying to think. I'm only a bit enlightened by talking about doing that. But the whole thing about enlightenment is that there's no such thing, there's no distinction between enlightenment and non, and non and non enlightenment. That's the truth of it. So basically, everyone is enlightenment or no one is enlightened. The whole thing, the truth of enlightenment is that enlightenment is nothing. But the thing is that you are nothing. That's the only way you're chasing. If you're chasing enlightenment, you're only chasing after yourself, your true self, which doesn't exist, which is nothing, which the whole fabric of the universe which can only be felt. It can only be felt and experienced directly. And even that, even that, you can't feel or experience it. Those words don't mean what I'm really saying. Those words sort of point to direct experience. But even direct experience doesn't truly point to it. That's the whole thing about Axel Thor and Leo. He talks about direct experience, but that's not even enough. You have to fucking say something else. You have to do more than just direct experience. Because yeah, it is direct experience completely. But at the same time, it's not direct experience. It really isn't direct experience. Damn, well, wow. fuck. Okay, here real quick. So yeah, I'm gonna take a look I did Wii first, then I did DXM. From 17, and I overdosed on June and July on 17, took 53 cough gels, 53 rolls to some pills, took 53 fucking pills, I'm fucking crazy now, man. 53 fucking pills to get high, that's how fucking crazy I was during that time. 53 cough gels, I was going to say 60, but I did 53rd, I, was still, I took it on the bus all the way home from high school. I would be on the bus getting fucking high, taking fucking cough gels, so by the time I get home, I would be feeling it. That's how fucking crazy I was. So there's people, there's people in my school that actually knew me for that. They literally see me all the time taking cough gels, I'm crazy, it's not. I was saying it was the money fuck. I'm only in my heart. So yeah, so 17, um, I did call the next time. Then after I overdosed, I kind of stopped. And I chose that I was just smoking weed and drinking until 18. So I was 16 weed, 17, cough syrup, the next time, I was over tussing. 18, I started doing cocaine. I did cocaine like one or two times at 18. I didn't like it too much, but it was nice, but I wasn't into it like that. And then from there, fuck, I'm gonna make this. Nah, I'm gonna put it 